Now, we, we really want to focus on just your audio work because, I mean, you have an amazing career and I was looking through just terrified at all the stuff you've done and you've done so much telly, so much theatre, so many things. But for the last 23 years in particular, um, our love of you has grown all the more through your audio work and in terms of what you've done with Big Finish. Um, so I'm just wondering, how, how did you come to work with Big Finish originally? Well, uh, I got a phone call from it was probably Gary Russell back then saying that they'd started up this company doing Doctor Who audio and would I be interested? And I said, yes, um, of course I would. Um, I'd had my favourite toy taken away from me and someone was going to give part of it back, you know, well, the voice box at least, if not the pictures. <laughs> and uh, the, the scripts appeared. And they were very good because the thing about audio as opposed to in vision drama is that you can say this is the scariest million times bigger than the planet Earth and it's heading for you. Give that to a designer in television and you're in trouble. Do it on audio. It's as scary as we are scared. As long as we're scared enough, you believe it. And I've always enjoyed radio drama because I supply the images when I'm listening to a radio play. So when they say she is the most beautiful girl I've ever seen, every person listening supplies a different image for that. If you do it on television and you say that line, half the people viewing are saying, she's not all that. What do I think about looking at that? Um, so you've got an advantage on audio. Provided you can create with your voice and with the words uh, the image well enough, the viewer rides along with you very uh, Sorry, the listener rides along with you very happily. So I've always enjoyed doing radio. Um, and there have been oddities. I, I once played uh, on the radio a blind person. And the director, who I will typify as being a bit of an idiot, said to me, you don't sound blind. <laughs> and I said, tell me how to sound blind. And he said, well, croaky voice. So I did a croaky voice. Yeah, that sounds blind. So th th there are issues you have to deal with occasionally, but never with big finish, I hasten to add. Um, and I love the way they work. And all the people writing for it, bless them, the majority were Doctor Who fans back in the day. A lot of them when I was doing it, or before me, Peter or John. And not only did they understand and love the genre, but they've learnt their craft by writing all those stories themselves when they were kids, you know, and putting them in their magazines and blogs. And now, you know, they're mainstream, all of them. Um, Nick Briggs, who now is the uh, chief executive um, of Big Finish, uh, I met when he was just a, a student wanting to be an actor. And I'm proud to say I got him his first acting job. And then he started writing as well and worked for magazines. And he's now, um, in my life, a very important person because he's responsible for employing me <laughs> most of the time. Um, and, I, and he's a thoroughly good bloke as well and a very, very good writer. As soon as he his name on a script, I know we're all right. But there's so many good writers who want to write for Big Finish. And I have to say the standard of scripts that I've received while doing Big Finish have invariably exceeded those that I did on television. Yeah. The TV ones were fine, but the audio ones are better, partly for the reasons I've already described, that the people who buy Big Finish audios featuring Doctor Who are people who understand the genre already and are buying into it willingly. Whereas a TV program, they're watching, but also there are thousands of others watching who may not buy into it that easily. So we have a captive market with Big Finish and an increasingly widening, widening one, which is good. Yeah.